All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. My, like I said, I, I go by Sparky, and uh, that's how most people know me by. If they try to call me by my given name, I usually don't respond, or you're not my friend. So most people who do know me call me Sparky, and I do respond to that best. So um, a little bit about myself. I, I'm a transplant from Ohio into Maryland. Uh, been in Maryland since 1981. Um, I'm a retired Air Force uh, senior NCO, 24 years of service. And I have been working as a Department of Defense employee for the last 26 years. So I'm still actively employed, keeping busy, but this is one of my more favorite weekend and evening duties and hobbies of doing uh, gardening, watching, and observing nature. So um, in the last two days, I counted bees. And in my yard, um, we've, we've had cuckoos emerging to the last couple of days, bumblebees. And uh, we've, I'm, I'm waiting for the female bumblebees to emerge from underground. They should be up shortly. It's getting warm now. It needs to get 50 degrees at night for about five days and they'll start emerging from the, and so when emptying the nest out. So early, late, it's probably gonna be Sunday or in, in, into next week for, the, for those types of ground nesting bees. And, uh, but uh, in order to, how I arrived at finding the ground nesting bees is when I stopped um, doing a lot of things in my lawn. I quit cutting my grass. I quit, I stopped fertilizing. Why should I fertilize, water, and cut? That took a lot of time, precious time, of my personal time on the weekend. I led butterfly educational programs for family at Patuxent for 25 years. Um, I also was able to, over those 25 years, we did a 20 year program of research of butterflies on the, on the refuge itself. So we have a, a database of 20 years of known uh, butterflies to exist in that Patuxent Research Refuge, about 13,000 acres from 1999 to 2019. So, but since then we've not done any more research or surveys, but uh, it, it was enjoyable while we did it. And uh, it was uh, really entertaining too, because we would do it one day out of the year, we were participating in NABA's annual 4th of July butterfly count. We did 20 years of the same time. And in the area, I led those, that program. And uh, so we had our ups and downs over the 20 years. And you could see the changes in numbers and the types of uh, disturbances that were going around the refuge. We're building a super mall. Grand Anne Arundel Mall was being built next door. We had development all around the refuge occurring. So little disturbance and, and introduction of herbicides and fertile, too much fertilizing by the local uh, homeowners. Unbeknownst to them, they're not professionals when it comes to putting down chemicals, the right amount. They just put the chemicals down, so not knowing of the consequences. So there's been some major impacts, at least, locally around the refuge, we could definitely tell. There, there, is, there, there is absolutely no chemical um, out there that discriminates, that only kills one, they kill all. So, so my choice about 25 years ago was when I started learning that, I go, stop using. And 
my lawns and my property haven't had chemicals on them for at least 20 years. Just natural grass, just mow, cut and mow when the HOA wants me to cut it. But we'll, we'll talk about that later about the HOA. So this is going to be kind of a, I don't know if it's an introduction, just more information, but it's about using a small space how to restore a habitat. And that's what we need right now because it's affecting the wildlife, the habitats that we have changed over the decades. We've destroyed vital, important habitat for various insects, butterflies, bees, uh, grasshoppers, manti, um, definitely uh, a, a major impact. So what I personally did when I moved into my new home, I tore out all of the landscaping that the builders put in and went looking for native, native bushes, native trees, native, any native plant. To me, some of the, my weeds in my gardens and my lawn are native plants, native wildflowers. I see bees on them. I see butterflies on them. So um, leaving nature be um, seems to have improved the environment, at least around my home. So. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. I have some native plant resources to show. And if you were here present, I have a lots of handouts on the table over here um, of how to obtain, where to go locally, looking for native plants, uh, non-GMO plants that, and non-condivore, I'll get back to that one. I got and a uh, and um, lost my train of for a second. And those handouts are, are available both on this presentation. They'll be available. So you, they can be emailed to the members if they'd like to have them that way, where they can go directly to the website. And they can order plants either online or there's local nurseries in the Washington and Maryland, Delaware and Pennsylvania that are all host plants, raised plants that you would purchase for your local area. And so, and I've, I've got some uh, available resources while we talk here for the homeowners on things that they can do large and small building meadows, uh, just small flower beds, flower pots, anything works. If it's got a, any plants that an insect can use as either a host or food, pollen. And then I have some things on uh, Maryland bees, native bees in particular, the, the concerns and urgencies of lost habitat and, and chemicals being used to produce insect resistant plants. If you see anything that says this plant is resistant to insects, just walk on by, don't waste your money. It's gonna attract insects, but it's all going, also going to affect the insect won't kill them immediately, but genetically it will make changes and it will harm future production of those insects. So, but the, uh, want to bring up some of the resources.
let's fix this for now. We don't have PDF Adobe on here. It's switches. There it is. Like I said, I, I have some handouts here. It's a simple handout for the more common butterflies in Maryland, regardless of what county you're in, what city you're in, what little town. But uh, we have the uh, the butterfly. It's favorite uh, nectarine flowers, and then their host plants for the caterpillar for you. That most of us follow various local guides for native plants. We will, I only buy plants that are native to Northwestern Anne Arundel County. I have a guide for the county of all the naturally occurring native species for that section. And I have that list, it's, it's on the computer here on the thumb drive, I'll leave with Matt that, that you can get those and it's it's great to use because it does have the um all the latin names but also the common names in which these these plants can be found in flowers and then I have a little bit the reason I wanted to bring these. There's some nice documents. This one's not, it's dated early 2000s. It's no longer in production, but it's a very worthwhile document to have with all the grasses, the trees, and the hope and the native species plants for the state of Maryland, broken down by county. And which will help you with the uh, plantings, transplants, where, where they should be on an annual basis. You can yeah, they're listed in uh, Latin names, plain English, and then planting times, heights, colors, and conditions of uh, soil, soil conditions, which, which helps out a lot. That's available. It's a not a very big document, but it can be shared this way. There are some more plant lists here provided by Monarch Watch. And also here provided by Circe's, where at least we have some things here where we can give you pictures of butterfly of the of the native plants, name of the native plants, type conditions of the soil, colors of flowers, and where it should be in a sunny or partly sun area. It's a, it's a nice little eight, 10 page document in color.
you know, to show one real quick. There, there's a lot more on here, but. As a member of Monarch Watch, they provide a lot of information as well. This is one of those for the Mid Atlantic region, which we're part of, for the coastal plain and then the inland. And it gives all the plants, but what I did on this document that they're highlighted yellow, this is for Maryland because they have Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and it's kind of cumbersome trying to look them all up. So what I did was just provided them as a highlighted list. And, and the whole thing. You know, Desktop computers are not the same. Mine's a little bit different than this one. And then here's uh, several, uh, got several handouts for pollinator plants. The key, when you get these, they have the keys for all the plants in color for you. You can see all the ones for the Mid-Atlantic region in Maryland. This, so. And certainly society is, um, dedicated to preserving invertebrates does not matter which. And so the last five years has been an effort against bring back the bees, save the native bees. Prior to that, about eight years before that, we, they started a program on monarchs to save the monarch. There was a concern about the low numbers of monarchs migrating between uh, throughout North America during each year and watching the numbers uh, dramatically dropping since 2004. There's been a major drop and it hasn't improved. And there's different conditions that Monarch Watch has identified for the monarchs that uh, man made loss of habitat. Um, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm kind of a radical when it comes to knowing what some, some of the effects that have happened because of the lower number of the monarchs. But in Mexico, around that park, they're cutting down the trees and the habitat and clearing it and um, to raise not only other animals, but uh, growing farms trying to grow vegetables so but uh, they uh, have had a major impact on the at least the wintering site for those monarchs you know there, there used to be eight nine hectares in size and now they're less than three each year so in size and so I and my monarch. Valerie. Take this down and move on. I'll come back to my pictures of mine. I'll come back. Mm 
host plants. Uh, these are some of the host plants that I have in my garden, but uh, I'll put up some of these. Let's, I have a large document here. Let's see. Another list of documents that I highlighted. Let's see. They're highlighted in yellow, but this is where um, I purchase my monarch seeds, monarch plugs. I get them from Monarch Watch University of Kansas. This time of the year, they start, um, their, their, their seedlings are now ready for starting shipment. And if you go out to their website at uh, monarchwatch.org, Anybody that's a teacher works with a school, any schools that are planning to do to make gardens, the school can actually ask for two or three um, trays of, of milkweed common to their area, common milkweed for free. And all you have to do is pay the ship. And um, that, that's some of the source where I get mine at the refuge. Uh, I'll get plugs, but you can also get seeds. But Monarch Watch is very particular about the common purple flower milkweed because there's only one type of that milkweed in the state of Maryland. So if they have the plugs, if they have the seeds, you can get them. But if no one collects them and turns them in, they don't have them to share. So there is some effort in, at least in Howard County and Anne Arundel County where we're collecting seeds to send to the University of Kansas for everybody. I, I think, and, and on the Monarch Watch, when, when you look for the uh, Monarch, uh, the uh, milkweed plant, they'll, they'll have a list, they'll ask for your zip code and then they'll identify the area on the map, what type of plant, what the number is, and if they have it available, they can make it available to you. But that's for the common milkweed plant. Uh, for butterfly weed, swamp milkweed, poke milkweed, doesn't matter in the state of Maryland where you get it from or where you plant it, because it's all over the state. And I, I would assume a lot of people should know what butterfly wheat looks like. I like this picture a lot only because it provides you with not only the plants out in the field, but also the pot seed pots. So people look at the butterfly weed and kind of get a little spooked on the seed pots. And uh, it's a constant battle with the milkweed beetle and the milkweed bud because they eat the seeds of the milkweed plant, so you're hoping to get the seeds each year before the bugs do. That's a picture of swamp milkweed. I have a more file pictures. I don't have any swamp milkweed in my on my property anymore. It's been too dry. And here you can see the purple flower. And once again, their seed pods looks very similar to to butterfly weed, but plant. Swamp milkweed's about four and a half feet tall. 
where the butterfly weed can get up to about two feet. Common milkweed stands can get up to eight feet tall, and they can be dense and thick. Uh, my two gardens stay around six, seven feet. So I have and poke. This one's a, a challenge to find. There's not that much of it. In Maryland, but it's here. We have some in Anne Arundel County. I know that. Because it's on the refuge. Someone found a grouping of the Stocks Research Refuge. Kind of interesting. We hadn't seen it, but it appeared because the seed, the flower looks odd. Kind of, if you know what, if you know what a poke berry plant is, poke berries, and they kind of hang. That's how the flowers do for that one, for the poke milkweed. Here I have the numbers for this year. If you're interested in uh, 2022 and 23 numbers for uh, the monarchs wintering in Mexico this year and the habitat where uh, you can see the dramatic graph from 1993 to 2022, that's the total number of population, wintering population, who's going to be the spring population for 2023. So, and of course, I, I just highlighted some things about uh, it's, it's still a major urgency. You know, they want, we, uh, it's an all hands on decks approach. You have to restore the habitat. You have to plant milkweed, you have to provide a space for them. Uh, the eastern flyway is worse than the western monarchs. But western monarchs only had to deal with natural tragedy, fires and flooding. Eastern flyway, they have to, they have to contend with us of building roads and malls and communities. So um, that's a little bit harder to overcome than if you had fires one year. So over the next couple of years, they can restore the population faster. But uh, and uh, right right now, it's just uh, it's wherever you can plant seeds, make a garden. And her suggestion, Dr. Uh, Obenhauser, was uh, what everybody thinks of, at least in you know, my yard, public schools, public roadways, churches, utility right of ways. I've, I've had the opportunity to work with BGE right of ways and doing surveys and assessing uh, new construction and doing chemicals control of woody plants, leaving the, floor, the other fauna alone, the soft plants, so that at least the habitat is still there for a lot of the insects. So um, it, it's a really good place. Um, right now, my yard, my yard and my, my neighborhood, I'm the only one that has wildlife. I have frogs, nesting birds. I have living mammals, squirrels, rabbits, and deer that come around. Everybody says, aren't you worried about the deer eating your plants? All of my stuff is native. They don't eat my plants. They kind of leave them alone. And I don't know if it's because of a dietary choice, but 
I myself, I, I travel the world a lot over my lifetime. I've had the opportunity and I've discovered that I prefer German over an American hamburger or uh, if I'm traveling, I prefer Japanese sushi, then I worried about an American carrot. Believe it or not, I got wild carrots and everybody leaves them alone. I thought, I thought the squirrels would dig them up or the rabbit. No, they leave them alone. But all of my neighbors with their exotic plants and trees are constantly complaining about the deer. I've never had to complain uh, since I switched to native plants. And another great opportunity of using native plants, it's less work. Since they're adapted to the environment, I don't have to take care of them that much. They need a little bit of help, maybe when it's 102 outside, to help them out, a little bit of water maybe. But other than that, you know, I don't do any other work with them. My wife's responsible for the garden. She has to weed them. She wanted me to build them. I build them. She maintains them for me. It's great. Let's see. And I put on here too, you can, Matt, can provide it to you. It's a, it's a bigger document, but it's the area of forest occupied by the colonies of monarchs, uh, butterflies in the in Mexico for this year overwintering. It's a, it's a nice document. Kind of assesses what was there. But uh, more graphs. Their graphs a little bit smaller, but uh, a lot of studies are going, currently going on with the monarchs' habitat loss. Everyone is uh, concerned. So, post plants for the monarchs, kind of simple milkweed. That's it. Um, Four types in the state of Maryland. The common milkweed is, and depending upon what zone you're in, you're in the same zone I am um, because of Anne Arundel, the line that goes from Anne Arundel County up to Baltimore County and on up into Pennsylvania is, is area 221 for common milkweed. It, just as number, it's a type of purple flower milkweed it's a lot lighter green than some of the other ones out west there'll be a dark green uh, and the leaves are shaped a little bit different but uh, they seem to grow much better in their own natural habitat than trying to bring milkweed in from kansas and plant it and it's a kansas plant uh, it doesn't fare well on the east coast because of too much moisture as compared to the moisture in Kansas. So system dies. And for the homeowner, um, this is the things that started last over the last 10 years. Neonicotinoids um, treatments used to kill and control insects, to kill and control plants, um, to make plant uh, insect resistant plants. Uh, seeds are treated before the plant grows, so the chemical is in the seed, stays in the plant. It's it developed in a root system and it's life decay, it doesn't, it stays right in the soil. So each year, any plants that come up in that soil are taking that chemical up in the root system into the plant. So 
as a bee nectars, as a butterfly nectars, that's going to have a major impact on the on the re, re, repercussion reproduction process, and they're they're seeing that that uh, less less of a population dying malformed caterpillars. So um, a lot of stores are trying to get them off the shelf in state of Maryland. I don't know if it's law yet. I'm, I gotta check again. They're trying to take this all the way from, take it away from homeowners and only give it to professionals to use these chemicals. I don't know how they're gonna be used and controlled, but I don't use them, I don't allow them. All my lawn companies, all the ads that I get in the mailbox, True Green, um, all natural. I'm going, if you're killing bugs, it's not natural. Because I, all I see is spraying something, you know, um, as we talked a little bit earlier tonight, there is no chemical that specifically targets one creature. You spray, you get them all. It doesn't matter. So, so I'll I'll leave this with you. There, there's great articles on sources about neonicotinoids and and this is just a little page, but uh, you can go out to their site and they have lots of information that the homeowner can use. I highly discourage it I, as a homeowner because I don't know how to use them properly. I'm not a farmer, I'm not a chemist, so I don't want to use them, so I just don't. And I had some, I got some handouts here, but uh, some garden, flower garden designs. This is just a simple one, a type of flowers that someone used to put in here. Remembering all these flowers can be found by some of their names, but they're not native to where you are. You just have to look for that native plant that's native to your location to have the best chance of survival. Because if it's non-native, you've got to work very, very hard to keep it alive. So I spend the energy trying go native as much as you can. And let's see, resources. I have a document in here for you. I did some of the work inside of here for homeowners they're all the hot links they work you can go to north american butterfly association sources looking for plants help different areas just here locally in maryland they have sources then of course, um, I, I I don't know if anyone's ever seen the threats to Maryland wildlife species and their habitats that Maryland implemented this plan 2015 to 2025. It's hard to find on the internet now, but I, I the link did work earlier today, but yesterday it failed. I have a copy of it here. It, it's process and what Maryland's going to try is trying to save habitat but it also provides their development plans for each of the counties to the year 2025 and a runoff county between 2005 and 2015 it was hor it's horrible um, we lost six farms they tore the I, I can't count the acres of trees that they took out to build uh, 
million dollar mansion homes and condos. So, but, uh, and then uh, another little snippet, the uh, Home Depot and Lowe's, big box stores. That's where you find the guys selling your plants with neonicotinoids. You have to be careful. Um, uh, Home Depot now tags them and says it's been treated. Lowe's does not. I don't buy, I don't buy any vegetation whatsoever at a big box store. No Sam's Club, no Walmart, no Lowe's, no, uh, it, it's a local nursery or I don't have a plant. Or I have friends that we do plant swaps. We have to cut them, we treat, we, you know, we want to break them apart. We want to, so we share our native plants and native seeds. We, we have, our, there's a few of us that share. And get into any clubs like that. That's the best club to get into to get native plants and seeds. Someone else who takes them from their gardens that they don't treat any of these chemicals. That's what you're always looking for. Excuse me. Sure. Uh, you, yeah, you, you, you can have your soil tested for that chemical yeah, anywhere in, in your garden. Sure. It can be done. Um, but who would do it? Uh, I, you'd have to find an independent lab. So in, in, in this little document, there's uh, quite a few links on nurseries and everything, Washington DC area and the Maryland area. And I, I checked all of them, all these links to make sure they were still valid and took out the ones that the organization don't exist anymore, but th these, are, these are all good. They'll go to where you expect them to be. So, everyone up and down Maryland, it's quite a good choice, but there's even some of these other links to send you to other nurseries in Maryland, too. Get it done there. And let's see, you can see this, you see the swap chapter five, it's, it's available. And I, I, I don't know how many people in the audience here or, or in Zoom are aware of the House Bill 322 that was approved in May, 2021. This took the HOA off the back of the naturalist who wanted to make a naturalist garden. Homeowners Association, if I decide to build a garden, and I have six around my home, which takes up 75% of my lawn. So cutting the lawn is only a one, a one hour event for me now every three weeks I cut every that's what I did the last two years so so the homeowners association would constantly issue me tickets well of course I never responded to them and but there was a family in Howard County who took their HOA to court sued and Howard County one of the Howard County uh, Maryland um, representatives 
produced or introduced uh, this bill to let the property owner that it's deeded to make his gardens. He could do whatever he wanted with his property. He didn't have to maintain a perfect green lawn. I call them green deserts. I have many homes around my, my house that are perfectly manicured green lawns. They stay green even during the winter, but you can't find a bird flying over them an insect of any kind, butterfly, oh no, they, they completely go around that area and you don't see any mammals walking through the yard. No rabbits, no squirrels, no deer, no raccoons, no possums, they don't come through there. They just go around and my yard and one other down on the end of our cul-de-sac does not do anything with chemicals or or anything so that's where they they kind of leapfrog down the Severn run behind us from his area through my area to exit back into the back into the run so uh, but just two homeowners of 10 and he and I both have been trying to convince the other ones to do what we do you have a lot of a little work in the beginning to restore the habitat but once it's restored, then you get the opportunity to enjoy wildlife set on your deck on July 1st and look at the hundreds of fireflies in your yard, but nobody else's. Um, I don't know how many people have gotten into their yard, their gardens yet, but I hope you left the leaves and haven't done anything with them yet and left your gardens, the woody sticks, because bees, single, single uh, bees will use those sticks, those plants left over, they'll get a hole in it and they'll lay an egg in it. And so your milkweed stems, I leave my milkweed stems until June, the year before. I'll show you something, I could show you around my property, what. I've done and what it looks like. So I love dandelions. A lot of people don't, but I love dandelions. First good nectaring flower of the spring. Got a lot of bumblebees and cuckoo bees on them right now. And you can. All right, and there's one other article in here, which is really good. Um, establishing pollinator meadows from seed. I did one of a 10 by 30 foot section in my yard. I make it a, made a mini meadow from seeds and it just grows. I don't cut it. I don't do anything with it. Uh, what, what, well, once a year it gets cut in the sp early spring. You get mowed one time, that's it. And disperse whatever dried plant seeds might be in there now. And it just comes back. I don't water it. I don't do anything to it. It just grows. I love it. So. But this, the, this is a fairly large document. So it's got a lot of good ideas and how to create, how to do just these micro meadows or 50 acre meadows. Got a big farm, be right away. So see, we're establishing our handy, the uh, habitat. And then 
Maryland bees. This will be real quick. Well, it's not real quick, but once again, we bring up neonicotinoids as the same copy. Just wanted to make sure I got that. Um, garden, bee garden plants. You'll be pleasantly surprised how I saw the butterfly garden plants. They're almost identical. Doesn't matter if you plant for butterflies or you plant for bees. As long as they have host plants that they use to procreate, it doesn't matter what you call it, a butterfly garden, a bee garden. Just odd. Mine's called a pollinator habitat. I have a monarch watch way station and my assigned to my yard because of the because of the, the gardens that we have with all the plants and the water source pond and trees the nesting birds oh the nesting birds no mosquitoes i don't have any mosquitoes around my house got so many birds nesting i got my pond full of eight or nine leopard frogs take care of any of the eggs in the water, the larvae. I don't have any mosquitoes. Haven't had them for years. Everybody else down the street is complaining, but I don't. It does not bother me. And I wanted to give you, some people might like this. This is an 11 meg document. but it was produced by Maryland DNR about uh, five years ago. Uh, bees, Maryland native bees. I belong to participate in several different bee watches. We're getting ready to start up bumblebees. Everybody in Maryland's looking for what plant bumbles bees use in the spring. And we know what they use in July and August. What did they use in March and April when they emerge? What are the first things? So this little event is just you take a picture of a bumblebee on a flower and you send it in. That's all they want. They want to know what that flower is and what county it is. So, but yeah, there's, there's events like that. Uh, whoever uses uh, iNaturalist app, um, they're, they're having a couple programs. They're doing bees too. But this is a very large document. But it's enjoyable to look at. And I've got one more bumblebee guide that's done by of the Eastern United States, done by Circe's, or no, excuse me, Pollinator Partnership. Several organizations doing their kind of own thing, but their different documents have lots of great information that not everyone has everything. So it's really cool. So I, I keep my source material if they're going to produce it, and I'm I'm literate, so I can read, and I understand what I'm reading. So uh, whatever I can get my hands, on, just to learn, try to help myself and help the environment and the species in it, which I'm one of them. So. And I even have something in here. This is a nice little guide you can print out and of the bumblebees in our area to help identify them. I, I like bumblebees the best.
No, no, they're difficult to tell. Right, yep. With their own little thing. I did not do a, I didn't do an in, in, in thing because I'm not done yet because I wanted to come back to, oops. I'm run over just a little bit. I thought it'd be more, less than about 45. need to find something. Anywho, carpenter bees. I have lots of carpenter bees in my lawn, around my house. Um, I have, I don't consider it a problem because uh, I have some raised flower or garden beds that I'm using for tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that. And I got three, four, five carpenter bees. I'd like to bore in those. That's fine. But around the house, I don't have any wood. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got the woods behind me They back in there, but my deck is, is, is not made of wood. It's compressed composite. So they have no interest in that, they, but they do love my raised beds. And I, I tolerate those only because the, the whole kind of help drain them anyways. I get a little bit of water comes through, through them. So uh, they haven't destroyed them yet. When they do, I'll just replace the board. But I, they're great pollinators. They're great pollinators. I'm looking for another document. I can't find it. What I gotta do is go back to my, I gotta go back to the drive. I don't know where I put it. I have pictures of my, gardens. So I got to find a directory real quick. Sorry. There it is. So these are display. There's a one launch. She, uh, she sleeps in my yard at night. I have a doe. Notice all the leaves. My leaves are, of course, that's a fall picture, but I won't pick up my leaves until 1 May. And this is the garden today. What it's starting, starting to grow. Uh, that's trumpet line. It's starting 
Yeah, uh, it, honeysuckle trumpet, trumpet vine there. Uh, that's what the garden looks, one of the gardens look like. Nothing, nothing's green yet, so everything stays. And this is one of the gardens out in the front of my home, not in the back, not being hidden in the back. Because the HOA doesn't, can't deny me to do it. This garden is going to get doubled in size. And it's moving, this picture be moving to the right about four feet, enlarging it, re making the footprint just a little bit smaller, less time to cut the grass, trying to get down to 30 minutes. Um, pollinator habitat, this is a fall picture. Same garden. Who's on it? Um, yes, that's Joe Piper. Yep. More. Common milkweed. There was, there was a couple of years here, the big stand of common milkweed. That's a 10 by 20, 25 feet full of common milkweed and uh, a couple of plants in there, but I think it was did have a whole bunch of bluebell stuff in there, but it's too dry. I wasn't able to save it. Backyard, behind the house. More milkweed. That little black pot. Most people, if they don't have a lawn, don't have property, but they have a, a little patio, a small porch. That's my black swallowtail pot. I put in fennel and, uh, and black swallowtail caterpillars everywhere. Oh, at least three broods a year. So just that little pot. It's just sitting there right now because we were getting ready to move it over on a patio. I'm a naturalist, it's survival of the fittest. Now, I, I know I don't bring them in. I, I have a lot of them that, I don't know if I can get over part of the garden over there. There's two bushes they always, they go and crawl over and they, they, they're, they're chrysalis or we find chrysalis in, in that garden four or five a year. Swamp milkweed. There's another pot. Normally, there's a woody plant over there they like. Catbird. Got nesting catbirds. They're fun. Leopard frogs. My mosquito buddies. Trees. Trees are important. I have red buds. I have um, pin oak a red maple, and a tulip poplar, which are all used as host plants for many insects. And that's a nice shot of a Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a hummingbird moth, but I don't know which one. It's it's a different. It's the other one. The dark body showed up. Bumblebees, uh, monarchs there. 
Carpenter be? I tag, I tag monarchs in uh, September, October, and November. My way station and over to refuge. So you get the purples and golds this time of the year, October. That's it. This was my presentation. Hopefully, coming and getting around to the answer, uh, restoration of habitat with native species plants. Save the bees, save the butterflies, save the invertebrates, period. Uh, you're welcome to any of the material that's on this thumb drive. It's staying behind. That can be shared. There's even more I did not share. Investigate on there. Some other things and all the paperwork stays as well. Handouts. Matt has my email address. If anyone has any questions, looking for information or one of the things, if it doesn't show up on the drive, um, feel free to email me. I'll even give you my email if you want it. C Sparks 007 at hotmail.com. I've used that for a long time, that email address. It always gets in. Okay, thanks. And I thank you for the attention. Any questions?